All right, so we're back here where we left off. What we did in the last video was discuss the difference between document and console. I'm gonna quick give you a really quick overview and then what we're gonna do in this video is actually talk about how we can access HTML elements. So essentially, you know, say this H1 tag here, well, it's kind of boring to just like write some stuff and, you know, do some errors and warnings. How can I actually change the value of this? How can I move it around? How can I change the color? I'm not going to show all of this, but I'm going to give you the basics. And it's something we're going to work towards as we move through this videos. And this is hopefully something you guys will notice that I start small, make sure you guys really have the fundamental concepts down. And then I slowly kind of move into some more advanced topics where you guys will start to understand. A lot of people like to kind of do everything in isolation and go really hard on one topic. That's good in some instances, but if it's too advanced and you don't get it, it's really detrimental to kind of the learning process, in my opinion. So anyways, let's now just look at what we did last time. So we see we have this hello, 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 this is a log warning. This is an error. That's great. What I'm going to do is actually remove all this now, and we're going to do something so we can modify this HTML H1 tag and actually get the value of it. Now, in HTML, we have something called IDs and IDs are typically the way that we're actually going to reference and access specific elements in our document. So in this case, what I'm going to do is set an ID for my H1 tag and I'm just going to call this header. Now you can make this ID whatever you want, but make sure you put it in quotation marks and make sure it kind of looks like this format here. So header. And what I want to do is I want to get the value or change the value of this H1 tag. Now, how do I actually reference this element? Well, like we talked about in the last video, we have something called console and we have something called document. Now, the difference between console and document is that console is going to be referring to, you know, that little console window that we had here and document is actually referring to the HTML document itself. So this whole thing. So if I want to reference the um, H1 tag here with the ID of header, what makes sense to use console or document? Well, in this case, I'm going to say document because this is not a part of the console. It is a part of my HTML document. So the method that we use to actually get, gain access to this element is something called get element by ID. Now, if you've ever seen JavaScript before, chances are you've seen this. And that's because <laughs> this is a very common syntax. Now, what I need to do is actually give the ID of the element that I want to access. So in here, I'm going to type header. Now, let me just kind of break down this line for you, because if you've never programmed before, this might be a little bit confusing what's going on here. Document is referring to this HTML document. This dot here means that we're about to call a method on this HTML document. Now, a method is simply an operation, a function, something that happens. It can get a value. It can you know, create a value. It can do all kinds of different things. And you call it by doing dot the name of the method and open bracket a close bracket, and then some kind of parameters or parameter inside. Now there's not always something in here. Sometimes it's blank like this, but usually we have something called a parameter. Now a parameter is something that you pass to the method, a value you give it so that it can do something with that value. In this case, what this method is going to do is get the value header and return to us the actual H1 tag here that has the ID of header to allow us to do some operations on it. So the first operation I want to do is actually change the value of hello to be something else. The way that I do that is using another method. Well, not really method. It's going to be actually a property called inner HTML. So here we have document dot get element by ID header. That's going to give us this H1 tag dot inner HTML, which is actually referring to what's inside of these tags. So whenever it says inner HTML, that means pretty much what's between the two tags. And now what I can actually do is use something called an assignment operator, which is just going to be the equal sign and set this value to be whatever I like. So here I'm going to make this tech with Tim exclamation point. Now, remember, we have to end our line with a semicolon because that's how we know the operation and kind of statement is finished. But let's try this. I think I've broken this down enough that you guys should understand. And when I refresh the page, notice all our logs go away and we get tech with Tim as the new value for H1 tech. So I think that's pretty cool. And I mean, with very minimal knowledge, you can already modify the elements on your page. Now that's awesome. But what if I actually want to get the value of my inner HTML? Say maybe this changes to something, whatever it is, and I actually want to get the value. How do I do that? Well, what I can do is rather than changing the value here, I can simply print it out and show it on the console, or I can actually write it to a new tag. And that's something interesting that we can do as well. So let's try that. So if I actually want to display this on the HTML page, sorry, and I don't want to display it in the console, am I about to use document or am I about to use console? 
Well, I would hope you guys would answer with document because that means I'm actually going to display it in the HTML document. So like I showed before, I'm going to use document.write and all I'm actually going to do is simply write whatever the value is of the inner HTML of the element ID header. So in this case, I should write hello, but I'm not going to write it inside of any H1 tags. So it should look a little bit different and you guys should notice this. So let's refresh and now we get hello and we get hello. So we've simply just written that, you know, next word by doing this document write get element by ID header. Awesome. That is, you know, pretty much how that works. Now, what I'm going to do is actually create a new tag here and I'm going to call this one an input tag. So I'm going to say H1 or sorry, what am I saying? H1. I'm going to do input type. If I could type here equals text and then ID equals INP. Now, what this is going to do is simply create a little text box that I can type in. The reason I want to do this is because I want to show you how we can change the value of this text box. And as we go through, we'll be changing some different values and you guys will see how this works for all different kinds of HTML tags. So in this case, if I want to change the value of a text box, what I need to do is similar to what I've done before. So obviously this text box is in my document. So I'm going to type document dot get element by ID. And in here, I'll just add my semicolon at the end here. What I'm going to do is simply put the ID, which is IMP. So what I've done now is, you know, reference this text box. So now how do I get the value of it? Well, I just simply do dot value. Now you might think that it would be like dot text, but that is actually not the case. In this case, we're going to do dot value and we're simply going to do what we've done in the previous one. It just changed the value. So in here we'll do it. Hello. Now, before I do this, I actually just want to show you what the text box looks like without this change. So I'm going to introduce to you something called a comment. Now, essentially what a comment is, is it is something that is there, but is not going to be read by the computer. It's a line that's going to be skipped over that you can still have there, but it's not going to mean anything. So in this case, what I've done to actually create a comment is I've done two slashes. Now, two slashes simply means comment. It's the same syntax as Java, if you've ever seen that before. And notice that my line gets grayed out and watch when I run this code here you can see that all that actually changes is we get this text box here. We don't end up changing the value to a low because this was a comment. Now, if I uncomment this by removing those, you'll notice when I go back here that the value of my text box changes to hello. So that is kind of the basics of how that, how that works, right? Now I'll show you a multi-line comment as well, which is essentially in this. So you do a slash, a star, another um, star and then a slash. Now what this allows you to do is comment on multiple lines, right? So these are all comments. This is obviously not, you know, proper coding syntax, just typing hello. So this will allow us to kind of skip over that because whereas here, if I do something like hello and then I go to the next line and I type hello, you can see this isn't commented out because what this stands for is a single line comment. You may see me use some of these. So I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of how those work. All right. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, uh, make an error here in the code because I want to show you guys what it looks like when you make a mistake because chances are you guys will be doing that quite often as you learn how to do this. So for example, um, let's try to just type X in my line here. Okay. And let's run our JavaScript code and notice that if we're looking at the console here, we get uncaught reference X is not defined. Now these are error messages that you guys will see all the time. And as you start going through this, you'll start to understand what these messages mean. I'm not going to explain exactly what this is, but it's very important that you actually read these messages. So say, you know, you get an error and like you're commenting down below. You're like, Tim, it didn't work. I don't know what the issue is. What I'm going to ask you to do is give me what this error message is and what line this uh, message is on so that I can help understand what the issue is. So these are meant to be useful messages that kind of tell you, you know, what's going on in your program, what's wrong. And here we're getting a message saying X is not defined, which essentially means we don't know what X is, right? This is not valid. We can't put it here. And don't worry if you get an error, because all you need to do is fix it. And there we go. The error goes away. So that's what I wanted to show you. You guys will get all kinds of these. And it's really important that you kind of look up those error messages and start understanding what it is that you've actually done wrong, because that's the fastest way to learn rather than, you know, just sitting there and kind of going, how does this work? Right? It's really easy. Just go to the internet, look it up, figure out what the issue is. Okay. So that I think is really all I wanted to cover. I'll show you one more thing, which is let's say we want to print out the value of our text box. And this is, uh, let's see, actually console dot long document dot get element. So in theory, what this should do is print out what the value of our text input box is, right? And that's exactly what it's going to do. So I'm going to show you now how this works. So what we've done is we've simply logged the value of document dot get element by ID input value, right? 
So when we look here, you can see that up in here, we get nothing. But what if I type hello? Does we do we get a log that says hello? We are printing out the value of whatever's in our input box. Is there a reason that in the log here, I don't get that answer? What if I refresh the page? I still am not getting hello printed out. Well, the reason I'm not getting that is because what actually ends up happening when you run this code here is we read each line line by line. So what happens is we have HTML, we read body, we read H1, we read this, we read this, and we execute them in sequence. So we start by doing hello, then we make this text input box, then we go into the script tag, we run whatever's in the script. So this means we run this console.log and we print the value. And this happens immediately whenever we run the web page. Now, can you think about why this might be problematic? Well, essentially, if I want to print out the value of what the user typed in this box, I can't do that by just, you know, logging whatever it is immediately, because immediately when I refresh the page, that text box is blank. So if we want to do that, we need to use something called a function, which I'm going to talk about in later videos. Anyways, that's all I wanted to cover today. I want to show you guys a little bit of errors. I want to show you how we can get some elements. I know I'm going very slow through this, but again, this is really meant for beginners. And I want to make sure that anyone watching this is able to understand. If I'm going too slow, let me know. But you can always fast forward the video and kind of skip through to the parts that you need. So that being said, as always, leave a like, subscribe to the channel down below, and let me know what else you guys would like to see in other JavaScript tutorials.